Hey there, welcome back, RJB here from RJB TV, and today we've got Mong against Leibaku back on the channel. But do keep in mind, I've done this set before, but it was about two years ago, maybe even two and a half years ago. Bottom line, I've casted this a long time ago, and I thought that, you know, sometimes it is a good idea to just do old replays again because they were so good. And I think a lot of the viewers haven't been around since the start. Maybe some viewers went back through a bunch of videos to rewatch old videos. But for those who haven't, this should be completely fresh for you. And it's also gonna be mostly fresh for me because I don't really remember what happened in these games. I just know that these games were absolutely amazing it's I'm not gonna say how many games there are gonna be I know how many games there are gonna be because I've got the files of course so I can kind of see we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine replays or how many more or how many less but that aside Mongear Brown Protoss absolutely amazing Terran player on the normal map he's a professional player and still competes at the professional level to this day he qualified for the most recent ASL, ASL number 14, and also for ASL number 13, which goes to show that he is, even after all these years, still playing at the absolute top level among the very best in the entire world for StarCraft. And that also includes his fastest map experience and skill. He has been playing like he started playing fastest maps somewhere in 2019 in July or in June and pretty much right from the start after he figured out how to play fastest map he instantly became an absolute top level Gosu he instantly stood out he challenged all of the fastest map Gosu he went for a Humber Asasu, went for Minjil, he even went for Brain and he went for Lee Boku, he went for JH and then he went for the before mentioned again he also played a lot against Lucky Back and Rabbit and he lost more sets than he won in total, so I believe, at the start. Because, of course, when you're kind of new to fastest map, you don't immediately figure out how everything works. But as time went on, he started to win a lot more games than before. He really started to shine bright like a star. And everyone knew that there was a new Terran king in town. And it was Mong. Number one Terran on fastest map in the world to this day. I think to this day there has not been a better fastest Terran uh, than Mong. But he's playing on the Protoss here, and Libaku is actually on the Terran. He's on the name Spawn King. He starts off with triple barracks into a command center because he scouted what Mong was doing. Mong went for two gateways, Nexus, double gas, and a cyber core. Does a little bit of touch and feeling to see if he can break into that base, but nope. Lee Bakku seals off the entrance. Now, Lee Bakku himself, in my opinion, his skill level peaked in 2019 all the way into late 2021, when I believe he actually stopped playing StarCraft. Somewhere in December of 2021. And I'm not sure if he returned. I think he returned, but I don't know on what name he returned. I don't have any new Lee Bakku replays, he does not wish to share them. But he doesn't mind if I cast his replays, if I get his replays from another source. Lee Bakku here feels he's got the opportunity to move forward a little bit and start a fight with those Zelda, but Mong is not gonna go easy into that calm dark night. Because he's fighting back, although now he's, he's running away there though, because he had to buy time for the cannons are in the choke. Libaku might arrive before the cannons finish up, but he turns around and does not push the envelope. So the cannons in the front are going to finish, Robo number 2 there getting put down, Robo number 1 finishing up very soon, and Sizzle of the Dune there in the back, also almost ready. Libaku himself here though is building an engineering bay and a factory. As two command centers, got two gas, mining, and 24 SCVs against 30 probes there from Mong, who's now starting to build a couple more cannons around his nexus, just to be sure. And he went for a third nexus, 
which is something I missed earlier, but which is something that is kind of important to note, because that, that third nexus is going to play a big, big role in how rich and how strong Mong will be over the next 15 minutes. I really like Mong's playstyle, by the way. There's something with these professional players where they have this unique, unmatched level of understanding of the game, and they can put their understanding to use in so many different ways that normal fastest Gozus would not think of. Now do keep in mind, a lot of fastest Gozus these days are former uh, semi-professional players, but very few of them are former professional players who have played at the highest level. So I always find it very interesting to see what these professional players bring to the table. Now the one thing I like the most about Mong though is Mong adapted and learned fastest map really quick and he started using the actual fastest map builds that the fastest ghosts use but with his own little touch, his own little focus on diverse technology and diverse approaches. Mong here though is being a little bit slow with his first push though. He did not go for a Zealot Reaver push, he's just going to go for a regular Z a Reaver drop. And Leibaku has been scanning and he's been keeping information, gathering information on what uh, Mong is doing. So the Reaver Shuttle Drop is not coming as a surprise as he already has turrets and marines in between the flight path towards those SCVs. So those SCVs are going to stay safe for a little while longer and Mong, instead of sacrificing and throwing away the Shuttle Reaver by forcing it in, is actually going to keep it here in the front and get Storm, get High Templars, get more Shuttles, get a Corsair as well, because the Corsair is going to allow him to fly that Shuttle in without the Shuttle taking damage from the turrets. Libagu now building raids, putting them on the high ground for extra extended vision. Important in my opinion, because as you can see right here, the turrets cannot look up onto the high ground. And if you put a raid there, they can. It gives more reaction time, but also adds a little bit extra damage onto what's flying in. Because the turrets have a longer vision range and a longer attack range, because they can actually see up onto the high ground. Now Mong already on 64 probes, he scanned the entire he scanned here in the front, saw nothing, scanned the sides, and happened to see the shuttles. Leave a good there stims to intercept, but the shuttle is not coming in, the shuttle is waiting on the side. Mong biding his time. He knows that Leibogu was paying attention to it because he noticed Leibogu scanned it. So instead of going immediately in, while Leibogu is on full awareness, he waits a little longer before he goes in. He might even prepare a second drop to go for the double drop from two directions to make it harder for Leibogu to defend against the drops. Oh, he tried to go in. He tried to go in, but oh, the Corsair goes down. Shuttles returning back home. Not going to go for the double drop, he's going to go for the single big drop, or so I believe. So I believe. More cannons coming down there around the Nexus. Does not want to lose his probes to a tank drop. Probably happened before a couple of times, and Mong immediately recognized <clears throat> the importance of needing cannons to protect those probes. I still see a lot of very experienced fastest players not build cannons around their probes. Because, ooh, these Terrans on fastest map, these very high level Terrans, they will find a way to kill your probes with a tank drop, even when you think it is not possible. Alibagoo now in 52 SCVs, getting a third Nexus, getting armories on the side as well, put a bunker on the side, just to make sure that the Marines on the side protecting the corner don't die to a Storm or to a Scarab. It's a, it's a small detail, putting bunkers on the side, but it helps with defending. There are a lot of little things you have to keep in mind when defending against these Protoss drops. Because a Protoss can drop anywhere in your base. So you have to pretty much protect every single little spot. You're almost in the top corner there, a lot of Templars, a lot of Reavers. Now this time the Bunker though, it's not gonna do much. Tanks in the high ground, getting stormed, double storm, takes them both down. Now Leibogu is in a little bit of trouble because his corner here is getting destroyed and he's got more storms lined up to throw down on the marines. Maybe he used all of them already, I'm not sure. Nope, he had more storms that are coming down, raining down. 
bring the pain, bring the lightning. A Monk has cleared out the entire top corner, killed about 30 units or so. He's making progress, he's really hurting Libaku here. Libaku's supply dropped down to 100. Which really goes to show that this drop on the top corner really did a number on him. He's gonna have to rebuild a lot of real estate. There's also a Dark Templar in the mix, though it is in detection range, so he gets taken down. Now Mong has another drop of character in the front. He's building cannons in the middle as well. Mong is progressing really quickly. The only thing I notice here is that his gateways are placed in such a way that um, this entire middle row here against the pylon cannot spawn Dragoons, but he's not gonna make Dragoons, he's gonna make Zealots non-stop, flies in over the top corner from the top, the exact spot he just cleared out, Libaku, not running away, he's unloading a lot of Reavers and Zealots there on the top corner, SVs are running to safety there though, the Reavers there in the corner, Marines not gonna do too much. Mong is destroying with two big, well-timed and well-controlled drops, and Libaku does not have what it takes to survive this, because the tank there in the corner goes down as well, and the Reaver is still alive, and another drop should be coming in very soon. Ooh, he has to turn around, he's got no money left in the bank, his supply is down low. Supply is down really low. Libaku is really taking some heavy punishment. And another drop there already flying in over the exact same top corner. Libaku is rebuilding that top corner a little bit, but he only has 46 STDs and only 100 supply in army. So this drop here is going to be devastating. Starts a load on the top corner. Tanks are on the scene, but a little bit too far away to kill everything in one shot. Starts killing the depots with the Reavers. And if Libaku gets supply block at any point, oh, he got stormed as well, but the storm missed. He dodged the storm there. But the Reavers are killing the armories and killing the supply depots. He is going to get supply blocked. And getting supply blocked in this situation is pretty much a nightmare situation. It's a nightmare scenario. What is Libaku going to do? to stay alive here. He's trying to push forward from the hill onto the minerals, but Mong shuts that down really quick. The Reavers are still pushing. The Reavers are killing everything. He just needs one more Scarab to kill four more supply depots. Ooh, what a master. Scarab there hits the SCV. Six of them do go down. The other side gets taken down. Oh, there was 20 of them. So Liboku literally got pushed to death from this top right corner of his base. He was really focused on his bottom left corner, he had a lot of units here. He also had a lot of units here on the top corner because he kind of knew the drop was coming. Oh, unloading there on the front, Templars behind the hill, Templars storming on the tanks. Tanks not really opposing much because they can't dodge the storms and the cells are breaking through. Mong knows he no longer needs drops, he just has to send in units through the front door and run Libaku over with sheer numbers, sheer strength. I haven't even looked at the upgrades, but I always do know that Libaku uh, is on 1-0, and Mong is on 1-0-1. He's got 2-1-2 two, two on the way. Breaking through the front door there, morphing an Archon. Yeah, Libaku is just getting outclassed here. Another draw. Ooh, four Reavers there right next to the supply depots, and there's literally nothing that can defend. This was a really, really strong showing from Mong. It looked really difficult to beat, to be honest. It took him a little while longer than usual to start the assault, but once he started once he started rolling, he absolutely obliterated Lee Buck Goo. Let's give him one win there on the scoreboard. Let's give him one win there on the... Um, whatever you call this. I forgot what to call it. Match history. This is the, yeah, match history. Okay, so let's load up game number two, because I've got time for two games. Let's do two games in total. Second one a little bit longer. And they're both swapping races, Libaku going to Protoss, which is his strongest race, without a doubt. Libaku is a very, very good Protoss, but as I said in the previous game, Mong is an insanely good Terran. Mong is really good at Terran. It's his main race on the normal maps, and he's gonna show us how it's done, or at least, that's what I hope. Let's hope that he's not gonna underperform. Let's hope he's not gonna underperform. Let's hope he's gonna give us a really, really good fight. So let's have a bit. They're talking about something. I'm not sure what they're saying, 
but they're talking about something, and I do assume it is interesting. But here we got... I need a drink. <clears throat> here we got Libaku. Wow, oh, I really need a drink. <sighs> okay. So here we've got Libaku on the orange Protoss, the middle left of the map. And his opponent is Mong, professional player on StarCraft, one of the best Terrans <clears throat> in the entire world. Oh yeah, my voice really isn't feeling good. My voice really isn't feeling good. Sometimes the voice just gives way and... <clears throat> wow. Not sure why my voice all of a sudden is giving out. It doesn't feel right. Like something in my throat, something with my vocal cords just doesn't feel right. Sometimes happens. So yeah, command center first there from Mong. Nexus first from Leibaku. Gateway also on the way. Gonna get gateman number two now as well. Actually, I think he went for a gateway Nexus gateway. Gateway. Triple gateway. I do think this is something Leibaku sometimes likes to do. Going for the triple gateway instead of the double gateway, which we usually see with the Protoss Bolt Orders. The triple gateway, it has its strength. It has its strong points. It has its strategic purpose. So let's see what he's gonna do. He's got a Forester on the way. I was expecting a Cyber Core, but it's gonna be a Forge instead of a Cyber Core. He's gonna go for. Not sure if I really agree with this here, though. If that was a Cyber Core, I would say, hell yeah, great choice. But if that's going to be a Forge, I think the Forge is a little bit early in this case. Because he's got Triple Gateway, Zealot Production, and a Triple Gateway, Zealot Production can keep the Terran away from his choke for at least another two minutes. Which means he doesn't really need cannons yet, and doesn't need to forge this early. Which means he could have gotten a cyber core earlier and faster, but he's going to get a cannon anyway. So I'm not sure if this is the most efficient, but Libaku is an amazing Protoss, so I do trust his judgment. But when I start thinking about it, in this situation I think that a cyber core forge a little bit later on would be better. But he's going to go for one... He doesn't have a cyber core yet. It's coming in right now. A little bit late. There's a nice little bit of gas built up from the one gas already there, though. Zealot's coming from across the map, but there's Marines there on the scene, ready to defend. Pulls the SV back as well, does not want to lose it. Pulling his Marines back to where he has structures to micro from makes it easier to defend because there's less space for the Zealots to move in and around it. Using the SVs there to block the Zealots. Pretty nice move. Firebats are spawning as well at the same time. Gas number two is on the way for Li Baku. Got a factory on the way for Mong. 25 SVs there against 24 probes, give or take. Stim is on the way. Two Zealots. Oh, three Zealots there coming from the side. But Mong noticed that they're coming in, so he's pulling his Marines once again back to the barracks. And Li Baku finds himself in a bad spot with his Zealots in between the barracks where they can't really all attack at the same time, so he pulls back. But he's going to lose most of these Zealots as a result. And now we've got four gas coming out from Mong this early into the game. Wow. He must be planning on going really heavy on the factories really early on. He's getting engineering bay as well. I'm not going to question whether 4 gas this early is the right choice because it's Mong and Mong knows this game many times better than everyone else except a couple of other professionals. Like Mong really knows more than almost everyone. You could say that as maybe 30 players who know as much as he does. I'm going to trust him on this one. Micoring away from the Zealous, Libaku not going to let it happen. And that fight does not go as Mong wanted to. Doesn't really get a lot of kills. Because in this situation, Mong also didn't know that Libaku had triple gateway. And triple gateway has more unit production than two. I think Mong was assuming there were going to be two gateways. Which means a lot less Zealots. So he probably felt that if Libaku had a two gateway production, he could push that choke 
maybe, like not guaranteed, but had a higher chance of pushing it. But three gateway zealot production, of course, means a lot more zealots, which means the marines are going to have a, less of an effect on, you know, hurting Libogu. So he's forced back to his base, has a nice supply while they're in the front, and a turret there coming up as well. So 42 SCVs now, he's going for a triple Stark port, which explains the four gas that early on. It's going to be raids all day, hunting down shuttles, defending the base, keeping those SCVs alive. Now, in a not-so-recent video, we saw Hamburger Sasu also go for a triple starport, but in his case, it didn't work out as well as it might do here for Mong. Nice little ball of settlers there on the middle. A second ball of settlers there in the choke. Got Storm on the way. Got two Reavers there in production. It's got two shuttles as well. Yeah, this starts to look like a lead buck good game. Although the first drop that he's now finishing up is quite delayed. Usually the drop finishes at about 6.15, maybe 6.10. This is going to be a pretty late drop. So it's shuttle speed there on the way. Now the drop is late because he went for a slow cyber core. He went for only one gas at the start instead of two or three. But now he's got five gas in total and 52 probes. He's moving to the front there, gonna go attack with those zealots while maybe flying in with a shuttle drop with double reaver, but there's turrets on the side and an SCV as well. Two SCVs in fact, building turrets. Kind of annoying. More turrets are on the scene. Mong knows it's coming, already has units in between on that pathway. Flies around. Let's go. Two more Reavers are on the scene. Oh, this was just Zealots. That was just Zealots. He's gonna attack the front, isn't he? Or is he gonna fly around and try not to it? He's gonna go for the front. Now, this is what I like the most about Mong. Mong has a really fast Marine unload from the bunkers, stims them, puts them back in. He's really fast at that. And stimmed Marines in bunkers do so much more damage than regular marines and bunkers and Libogu here does get the most out of that push though. Keeps one reaver alive, kills three supply depots, Mong immediately builds new ones, he's currently supply blocked, starts lifting up his barracks as well for extra vision on the high ground. Got a lot of raids there in the back waiting to hit those shuttles coming in. He's not yet revealing the fact that he has rates. Yes, if he's just still alive there on the bottom, and they spot out the shuttles, which now means the rates are going to move in position to snipe them out of the air as they come flying in. It's going to be a rough surprise there for Li Baku. But more shuttles are coming in, and of course there as well. But here come the Wraith Armada. Shuttles running away, but the shuttles ain't too fast to get out of this one. Wraith's there on the hunt, flying, chasing down those shuttles, and the shuttles all two get taken down, and Mong defends the very first drop from Li Baku without much effort at all. Now he's looking for more shuttles, knowing that more shuttles might be there in the choke, but the shuttles are protected by the cannons at the moment, so he flies around and returns back home. Now what is Li Baku gonna do? Traditionally speaking, we get observers in the situation, like Corsairs, a lot of Corsairs, and some observers, because Wraith might have cloak, so you get observers, so in the case that they cloak, they won't kill all the Corsairs that were made and built to kill the Wraiths, because Corsairs absolutely destroy Wraiths without much effort, but you do need a little bit of assistance from those observers to make it possible. Among now 65 SCVs, he's got triple command center number 4, they're on the way, he's got about 7 factories and about 3 starports and getting 2 more and a science facility as well. He is really gonna focus on the anti-air with the rates, his spending is off the charts, look at him, he's got low minerals, but almost 70 SCVs, he's spending so extremely fast. Comes in from the bottom side there, marine sniping shuttles out of the air, temples are unloading on the scene. No shuttle made it through to the minerals, so the minerals are alive and safe. A little bit of an interesting little supply construction here. I mm, Usually people only build four rows, but he went for a fifth and a sixth one. Interesting. Might it come back to bite him later on? Not sure. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. 
A lot of drops are on the top side, but there's a lot of turrets in between. No course are on the scene to escort those shuttles in, so the shuttle's not gonna get far. Not gonna get very far. And he turns around, seeing that there's a lot of turrets there. Uh, and Los is out there to kill the Marine. Important detail to limit the amount of vision the Terran has all across the map. See a lot more Coursers this time around, got observers there in between as well, getting more upgrades there as well for all of his units, got zero, 0 there for the ground, but he's got two cyber cores, so he's gonna go switch over into carriers at some point, he just finished up level 1 attack there for the Zealots, he's got the big big Corsair Balter on the bottom side, right there, ready to snipe, but Mong probably knows observers are on the way, although he's a little bit slow, the observers are still very far behind, so everything gets taken down. The dance of the raids, ooh, beautiful stuff. Only a pro player could dance with the raids like this. And yeah, the observers were just way too late. The observers were lagging behind. Libagu was a little bit too eager to go in and couldn't kill a single raid with the Corsairs. And now we're switching over into Valkyries because Valkyries are simply way better than the raids. He's still on five gas. It's gonna add on five more very soon, but first he wants to just stabilize and secure the base, finish his base, get everything he needs for the late stage, because we're entering the late game stage. And it looks like, yeah, Libogu really is gonna go for carriers. He's getting four more star gates. He's getting more canister on the side. Might build um, shield batteries here as well. Comes in, observers in between the Corsairs, raids this time around, a lot weaker, but the raid dance is still happening. Oh yeah, the raid dance is beautiful. Templar does unload, but the Templar doesn't get stormed, so the SVs once again do all stay alive, and Libagu not having much success this time around. This game, he's simply not achieving anything at all. We're finally getting more gas there for Mong. He's gonna build more factories probably soon as well, another drop there flying over the middle. Yeah, Libaku not having a great time, and breaking through the front is also going to be difficult because there's six supply depots in between, functioning as a wall, and you might even build a seventh one and an eighth supply depot there in the front. But his front is at the moment the weakest, like this bottom left corner is definitely the strongest part of his base, starts loading on top of the corner there, starts storming on a tank, starts gonna, he's going to take down the turrets. And Mong has to unsiege and move new units to the top corner, but a lot of turrets here are going to go down, so now we finally have a weak spot in Mong's base. But Libagu's there going to go for the bottom side drop with a shuttle and a Corsair, and a lot of drop there being flown over the, to the right side, ready to fly in from the top. This time around he's got his Valkyries in between though. But the Valkyries being right here means that this drop from the bottom corner might fly in, although that is a lot of turrets. And he finds the shuttles with a scan, kills the shuttles, one shuttle survives, but he's forced to return back home, and Mong is just not gonna give Libaku any possibility to make anything happen, really. This is just perfect Terran defense. How do you ever break into this Terran? How do you, how do you hurt Mong? Mong's defense, honestly, is Perfect. This is perfect defense. We're trying to put some tanks there on the side to just kill those pylons and those zealots that are hanging there. We've got more shuttles being prepared for another big drop. He's getting more upgrades there for his arrogant and shield upgrade there as well. He's currently on 101 for his air. I think Mong is already on. 1-1 for his ground, he's gonna be on 2-2 very soon for ground, and his air is also on 0-1. Big drop coming from the bottom corner, but the, the Valkyries once again, Valkyries make defending against shuttle drops just so extremely easy. All you gotta do as a Terran is use those scans pretty much non-stop to keep information and keep track of those shuttles as they're being loaded up there in the front. Like, every time you can, just throw down a scan, and that's exactly what Mong is doing. He's scanning this choke point non-stop. He always knows when a drop is moving. He always knows what to do and when to move. But carry is on the way now from Li Bagu, and Mong has his base pretty much finished, pretty much complete. He's pretty much ready to move out, 
after he gets two two upgrades there for his tanks. He's waiting for two two upgrades. But he's already pushing tanks on the high ground, killing the cannons on the middle. There are oh the shuttles once again getting scanned by Mong and the Valkyries hunt them down. This just really is one of the very best Valkyrie raid defenses I've seen in a long time. Not a single drop is actually doing a single thing. Not a single drop is doing has done anything. So far, not one drop has managed to do anything. He's hunting for him. Oh, he finds them, scanned the front, saw them leave, had his Valkyries in between, kills them all without any effort. And now thanks to the high ground. Mong is looking overpowered and Lipaku is looking like he's lost. What the hell do I do against this? How do I attack? How do I hurt him? How do I hurt someone who has a perfect defense? Is it even possible? Lebaku is scratching his head. He's in trouble. He's making a tribunal for the Arbiters. An Arbiter tribunal, actually. Getting more carriers. He's ready to push with the carriers because the drops have not worked. And he's got Valkyries hanging in the front aggressively. So that any shuttle that spawns is just gonna get killed. So Lebaku cancels the shuttles. He's got more air upgrades there finished up than before. He's, he really has to hurry up with his carriers because I think Mong is going to start moving out very, very soon. He's already pushing through the middle with the least possible units he's got. Killing the bottom corner there of Li Baku's base. This is pure abuse reversal. Usually a Protoss is abusing the Terrans, but Mong flipped the script. And he's pushing the boundaries of what a Terran can do. Really, really liking what I'm seeing. Stonewall Terran pushing out across the map. Opens up his choke. And now he's going into the middle. Can Ali Bakku defend this mass Goliath tank attack? He's got two, two upgrades there. And Li Baku is currently still on... I can see the upgrades. But no ground armor upgrades or ground weapon attack upgrades. Just all pure carrier upgrades for the air. Got six carriers finished up. Taking a big load of damage there from the Valkyrie. As the interceptors pull back. There's no shield batteries at the moment. They could really help him out. He really need some shield batteries. And some Arbiters with Stasis as well. To lock up those Valkyries. Mong is pushing in. Setting himself up alongside that hill. Carry is dancing back and forth. Oh. Oh, the carry is taking so much. Look at the damage they're taking from the Valkyrie rockets just returning into those carrier bodies. Look at this. He hasn't directly attacked the carriers once. And has already burned through all of his shields. Valkyrie's coming in, going a little bit too far. Arbiter on the scene. So many tanks that are on the scene as well. Building tourists now as well, in addition to the Valkyries and Goliaths that are hitting the air. Arbiter cannot use stasis though. He's not of energy yet. It's just they're in the front buying time. Gonna get it stays alive. Carriers pushing. He's just hanging there. He cannot pull those carriers back because if he does. The Valkyries are going to kill the carriers. This is a very difficult situation for Li Baku. Where he's forced to keep his carriers there in the air. And it's working. The carriers in the air doing nothing. No micro just attacking. It's working out against the Valkyries. But a lot of turrets are being built. And the turrets are great against interceptors. You're going to have to push back onto Mong quick. Mong not going to sit around and wait. He's already sending new units across the map. Got seven starports there back at home, so seven Valkyries every single round of macro production. Let me check on that Arbiter to see what his upgrades are. So on 2 1 2. So both players on about similar upgrades there. 2 2 for the Valkyries as well. Needs. Oh! He, had, he almost had Arbiter energy for his stasis, but he loses the Arbiter as another three Arbiters are in the back waiting for energy though. This is gonna take a little while, though he's pushing back. He's clearing out the base from the Terran infestation. He's pushing Mong back into the middle. Got more Valkyries that are waiting on the middle, ready to strike. And when the moment is right, horses in the air. Horses are pretty good against Valkyries, it turns out. 
courses are pretty good against Valkyries. So yeah, Li Baku is finally pushing back. But Monk still has the upper hand. Monk killed more of his SCBs there by... You know, it was only 55. But 55 SCBs there, back at home. Pile in the middle, looking beautiful. A lot of particles flying to and fro. Carrier is pushing forward. Carrier is still looking strong. One of them goes down. Goliath's coming out. Oh, the carriers are all on low HP. And there's no shield batteries to heal them up. All oh, the Valkyries coming from the side. Now the Goliaths are target firing on the carrier bodies. Carriers went too far forward. Have to retreat. Loses three, loses four. Now the situation looks very good for Mong as his tank and Goliath upgrades are now on 3 3, fully maxed out. Corsair army coming in to kill those Valkyries, but it's largely Goliaths on the low ground that are doing most of the work. Has some armors with stages to lock down some units, but oh, it might be too late because the tanks are rolling forward, ignoring the carriers in the front. He's ignoring the carriers in the front as the Goliaths keep hammering down on the carriers and the arbiters. He's oh, luckily he's got some Dark Templars to kill those tanks and he's doing so successfully. Mong is very, very focused on producing and hitting those carriers. But our temples are successfully pushing. He's building a proxy gateway base there on the top corner. He's getting disruption right for his horses as well. And he's almost on 3-3 air upgrades there. He's gonna take, I think, up uh, and up. Wow, I can't pronounce it. I think he's gonna take about 40 more seconds. That's what I wanted to say. About 40 or 30 more seconds for those air upgrades to finish up. Is that enough time, though? Is that enough time? The Goliath Dancer on the middle is a beautiful sight to behold. At the moment. Mong actually kind of running out of money, but he has so many Goliaths that I'm not too worried about his money or economy because he's going to push forward and those carriers do not stand a chance against the 24 or 30 Goliaths who are on the scene just shooting on the carriers and interceptors. Everything is burning down faster than ever before and he's now pushing forward, marching forward, setting up shop there in the front part of Li Baku's base. Li Baku is bleeding out. Li Baku is calling GG as Mong dominated this game, never ever took any damage back at home. He defended every single shovel drop absolutely perfectly without a single mistake. Absolute perfect execution. Perfect focus. Perfect scanning. Scanning allowed for him to absolutely dominate the game. And Libra loses game number two. Mong is too damn strong. So let me just update this screen real quick. And then we're going to end the video because... I don't have enough time to do more games than these two. So I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I mean, whenever I see Monk play, I just... In my opinion, I enjoy his play the most. Even when he's defending for 14 minutes, I still enjoy it so much. Because he's doing so many interesting high-level things. Anyway, I hope to see you return in the next video. It was part number one. In part number two, we're going to do in the game number three, four, maybe five, maybe six. I don't know. Depends on how much free time I have to cast uh, games for video number two. Please do return. And please leave a like, a comment, and a subscribe. Do what you believe is the right thing to do. All I want is to see you return.